I'll wait here. Thank you, Mara. Is your screen on on your phone? So I just have to pick it up. My screen is on my phone. I'm going to mute up myself for now. Hi, everyone. I see all the numbers going up. I see you guys coming in. I wanted to welcome everyone. My name is Aliza Shulman. I'm the Assistant Director of the Tri-State Region at Amit. Um, we're just gonna let a few people trickle in. So um, in the meantime, I'm going to introduce you to our uh, chefs tonight, our cooking hosts. We have Pauline Hayes. Hi, Pauline Wave. Um, and we have Molly Sherman. And both Molly and Pauline are proud Amit supporters who love cooking. They each immigrated to Englewood from their respective Syrian communities of Brooklyn and Deal with the hopes of bringing a little spice to our Ashkenaz palates. This event would not have been possible without our event committee, which is Tamara Golden, Pauline Hayes, Debbie Moed, Molly Sherman, Ramesh Soleimani, and Debbie Stern Blumenthal. And I wanna thank tonight's sponsors. We have in the Mahadra Munchie section, we have Aviva Gottlieb, Deborah Jakubowicz, <laughs> and Debbie Stern Blumenthal. Don't, don't laugh at the way I say that, Molly. And then the Kusa Bejibin contributors is Honey Shulman and the Ashkenaz admirer. We have Alana Dweck, Deborah Marks, and Debbie Moed. So I wanna thank you all for sponsoring tonight. It's gonna to be great. We have almost 45 people logged on. It's really exciting. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Molly now to tell us a little bit about Amit. Hi everyone. Welcome to A Night in Aleppo, Dairy Treats Edition. Pauline and I are so excited to share our love of Syrian cooking with you all. Before we begin, I just wanna share a little bit about Amit. Amit educates more than 41,000 students in 104 schools from Israel's very diverse population. And we've been doing this for 95 years, educating students and giving them the path to a successful future. We reach out to our 41,000 students, 70% of whom come from disadvantaged backgrounds, where they are to give them the tools for them to have a successful life. We make sure to level the playing field and close the opportunity gap. For three years, Israel's Ministry of Education has voted us the nation's number one educational network. This event is very much in the vein of what we do at Ami, allow our students to follow their passions into a career. When it comes to cooking, we offer our students the opportunity to learn culinary arts in programs such as the one at Amit Ramla Technological High School. It is a three-year program where students get theoretical and practical experience in nutrition, cooking, the laws of kashrut, and food science. When they complete the program, they get a certificate as a stage one chef from the state's office of employment, and this helps them to launch a career. At our program at Amit Fred Kahane Technological High School, Students also learn the various cooking and baking skills that allow them to find careers in the culinary arts. And at Amit Kennedy, we use culinary arts to help our students with special needs. As you see through Amit's current culinary programs, we encourage each student to follow their path to create a secure and successful future. Personally, Amit speaks to me as a parent who understands the importance of quality education. Although my kids might be small, I know that I would give the world to make sure that they get their best education possible. I want the same for all of our students and all the students in Israel. Here's a short video to give you a glimpse into what we do in Israel. Thank you so much, Molly. We're about to start, and I just want you all to know that if you have any questions, put them in the chat, and I will read them to Pauline and Molly, and you will get your answer. And with that, let's begin. All right. Hi, guys. Um, I think 
I hope you can all hear me. Um, but as they introduced before, I'm Pauline Hayes, um, and I'm working with Molly today, although we're virtual. Um, we wish we could be together doing this, but hopefully soon. So I'm going to start off tonight um, getting us started with some USAC. And I think a lot of you are familiar with, some might not be, um, but it's a very traditional Syrian dairy pastry. So think um, kind of like a baraka, but not as flaky. Um, it's like a more buttery, cohesive dough rather than like a puff pastry dough. So I'm going to walk you through how to make all this tonight. Um, a couple of things. So I'm going to make the dough from scratch, which we sent the ingredients, um, and you guys have the recipe for um, a hack and an easy way out, which is really just as delicious if you don't have time or it's too difficult for you to work with the dough, is buying the Mazer Sambusek dough in the frozen section of any of your local kosher grocers um, or shop right, um, any large stores like that would carry it. Um, so if you have that tonight, um, you can also pull that out, let them defrost for a couple of minutes and they have to be pliable. Um, you have to be able to fold them and work with them. Um, but I will get started um, on making this. So I'm going to have my sous chef come over here. So it's really um, important. I'm going to actually switch to my um, phone. Oh, okay. Well, I'll start. Um, so basically, it is very important. Like the consistency of the dough is the most important thing of the whole sambu sack making. So before you do anything, just pay attention because it's really important to see what steps there are. So um, as you see, I pre-measured everything. Um, and I don't know, Lisa, if you want to move the spotlight to my phone because I just want everyone to see the consistency of what the dough is going to yes. be. Yes. Um, Let me do that. So Find your okay. okay. Will, can you, no, <laughs> one second. Did no you, problem. did it? What's the name on the phone? Pauline Hayes. Uh, you're only on here once. Keep talking and All I'll right, find so it. So I'm going to keep going. Okay. Um, and I'll talk through some of the things, by the way, like as you need it um, to have or whatnot. But um, if you're using, definitely use a mixer. Um, if you have a KitchenAid, use the one hook um, dough attachment here. Don't use the um, metal wire hook. And the same thing if you have like a Bosch, any other type of mixer, this is going to mix the dough the best without getting it intertwined in that metal. So um, I'm gonna pour, keep pouring. So we're, we're good, Pauline, everyone's watching. Amazing. So um, as you saw, I put some all-purpose flour and then semolina, which um, is another type of flour. It's just kind of ground in a different way, as you see. Um, so it's two cups of regular flour, one cup of semolina, and then it says a dash of salt. So I just, a little bit of kosher salted, not too much because my, my butter is salted. Make sure that your butter is salted and if it's not salted, use a little bit more of that salt. Um, so I'm going to get going. I do need you, Sushi. I'm really sorry. I need this in my mouth. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is put the butter in, and that's kind of going to get the um, get the dough going. So when you, and, and I think we had sent, um, we had sent a email out that the butter should be room temperature. Make sure you don't melt the butter and make sure that it's not frozen or too cold because you're going to have to use your hands and it's going to kind of have to mold into the dough. Um, kind of like think of it as, you know, just the consistency needing to be right, right on. And you're not going to put it, you know, in, in whole sticks like this. So as you'll see, I'm going to start by literally using my hands. I wash my hands. If you want to use gloves or if you want to use a knife, just take a couple of chunks and throw them in. It's two and a half sticks of butter. I know that sounds, I know what that sounds like, but you know, so just, you're not gonna care. So I put about half the butter to start, and then I'm gonna get going. So come a little bit further down here. Yeah, exactly, there we are. So I'm gonna keep throwing the butter in. And eventually, miraculously, this is gonna become a dough. So I just put one and a half sticks. And again, try and make sure you don't use sweet butter. Like be attentive to the type of ingredients you're putting in because that'll change the flavor for sure. Um, all righty. So I'm going to turn off. I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Oops. 
Can we keep going? I don't need to really monitor it right this second. And as it keeps going, there's going to be one other ingredient. So it's really only one, two, three, four, yeah, I guess you could call water, um, a fifth ingredient. So it's about a quarter to a half a cup of warm water, but you really don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to put it very slowly and kind of move it around because the last thing you want is a liquidy dough. I'm going to turn it off real quickly. There's something. And again, I'm very hands-on, as you can see, with my cooking. Um, and I'm going to start again. So I'll put a little, little bit more of the water. I really don't want to go over here. So my dough is coming out really nicely, as you see. So all that butter really got nice and um, nice and mixed in. I'm gonna do it again so that we do, and I can this way I can kind of feel the consistency. It's gonna be where I want it to be, but not quite there yet. We are almost there, and this will probably be the last one. Yeah. Tiny bit more water. All right. Okay, so as you see, it's really very simple, but it's really all in the way that you um, execute and the way that you put that butter in. I think my mistake when I first learned how to make something stuff was really <laughs> using melted butter um, or just using butter right out of the fridge. Um, and a friend of mine was like, you are doing it all wrong, my friend. <laughs> and so I put the butter and I will never make that mistake again. So we have this dough, perfect. Um, it's nice, it's not too sticky at all. It's not too crummy, it's not too liquidy. So what we're gonna do is after this, I'm gonna cover it and put it in the fridge a little. Um, the butter will help it set a little before we make this down which we're gonna come to later in the evening. Um, and now I'm gonna move on um, to the egg and cheese filling. So basically, um, I'm gonna put this in the fridge once we hand it over to Molly. Cover it with a plastic wrap because you do not want it to harden um, and you don't want the moisture to get out. So the next thing we're gonna do um, is the mixture, as I said. So the recipe calls for two pounds of grated mozzarella. You can use mozzarella or monster. Um, it's really up to you. Um, but I usually do it like kind of half by half. So I, I use half the bag because I really don't want to end up with too much of the mixture at the end and then have to throw it out. Um, so I'm kind of going to go halfsy here. So I use one egg to half of the bag of cheese. Um, so here, I mixed it. I whisked it already. I'm going to put it in for this. I'm just gonna use a small fork to mix it around at least in the first run. So like what, you're, what you wanna achieve here is actually not what this looks like right now. You're gonna have to get your hands in there um, and just wanna distribute the egg evenly. And then I'm gonna get my hands in there and you really wanna like clump it up. So like the, what you wanna get out of this is are cheese balls. Um, again, some people do fill them with like the shredded, like kind of take a tablespoon, put it in. Um, again, I've done it both ways multiple times and I find this is way easier. Um, and you can kind of also prepare it, but it, it, it makes much, much less of a mess for the filling. So this is what they're gonna end up to be like this. So they're gonna be about, and again, well, you can kind of do this um, if you're gonna follow along with this, make them about the size of, I would say like a cherry tomato. Um, so we have a question. Sorry, yeah. I interrupted you. Um, Alana Sohn Cohen <laughs> asks, do we need to put the dough in the fridge to cool? Yes, put it in the dough, just make sure you cover it with plastic wrap. Okay. And even right. it's preferable if you like cover it directly, 
like just like make press it the wrap right on. Yeah, it. press the wrap in it or just wrap it in plastic wrap and put it in the fridge. Perfect. For like, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. So um, this is gonna, I'm gonna pass it off to Molly in a minute and we're gonna come back to me once the dough is ready. But if you guys are following along with this recipe or just in the future, you want your balls to be kind of about this size, eventually you're gonna want them to be more like logs because the, the sabu sacs are crescent shaped and these kind of have to fit in the middle there. So I'm gonna pass it over to Molly and I'm gonna continue on this um, and prepare for our next segment. Okay. Keep us okay. updated, Pauline. So <laughs> we're gonna start with um okay so just back to if you guys saw in the chat if you haven't already done so please please boil in a pot of water about a cup and a half of water three quarter cup of lentils because for the next recipe the majadra we want it so that the lentils are a little bit soft and if we boil them ahead of time, it cuts the cooking time and make sure that the rice and the lentils cook evenly. So if you haven't already done that, just put it on a flame, about a cup and a half of water to three quarter cups of the lentils. And just keep an eye on it. If you see or you notice that the water is evaporating, just add more. It doesn't matter how much water is in there because we're gonna be straining it out anyway. So we just wanna make sure that the lentils are not hard because that is not gonna be delicious at all. Um, and then I also have here my onions that I'm sauteing very thinly sliced in about a uh, half a cup of olive oil. I have three onions thinly sliced and I'm just letting them caramelize. So I'm, I'm really just not even doing much of them except just stirring them around every time that I remember. And this also is gonna be for the majedra later, but since it takes some prep time, I figured that we would you know, be efficient with our time. Anyway, let's get to the kusa jibin. So that basically loosely translates to um, quiche or jibin means cheese in Arabic and kusa means squash. So it's basically telling you half the ingredients right there. So what you're gonna do is you're going to um, dice up one onion and then you're also going to quarter and cube. So you kind of want, you know, you're quartering it like this about, I did about four zucchinis. You can use, you know, yellow squash, you could use green squash, whatever type of zucchini you like. It's gonna be sweet. So it's kind of like nice because I feel like a lot of um, dishes, you know, when we think of like a quiche, we kind of are thinking of like a kugel, which like for me, it's always like pretty sugary and, you know, sweet. And this is sweet without adding sweetness to it, which is great. And kids like it. It's like really nice and easy to, to um, cook and throw together. And everybody, everybody likes it. Even my husband that's lactose intolerant, he loves it. So and basically- he, And your husband's Ashkenaz and he loves it. Yeah, and he's Ashkenaz also. So that's a more important point. So basically um, I cut up about four um, zucchinis and I'm gonna, get myself a nice pot out, three tablespoons of olive oil on the bottom, and you're gonna saute your onions with the zucchini together. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're kind of just gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. You want the zucchini to start softening, but you don't want it to be so liquidy that it's like letting out tons and tons of juice. If it does, that's okay. You just are gonna have to kind of work at sifting it out when you transfer it to the Pyrex later. But that's basically what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your onion, hear that nice sizzle, and add that. And then I'm adding my zucchini and my pre-cut zucchini. You just add that all in. And you could add a, like a pinch of salt just to help the softening process of the zucchini. Literally, I'm just taking like a pinch. I don't really measure, so you know what I mean. <laughs> and you kind of just keep an eye on it. You stir it around. Some people cover it so that it also helps to quicken the, the process of softening the zucchini and the onions. 
really up to you, whatever time you have to dedicate to this, but just don't add water to it because that's just gonna make it very watery and you don't wanna have a watery quiche. It's not very good. Okay, so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the cheese mixture, which is basically very similar to what Pauline just did. Um, I'm gonna take about six or five or six eggs and I'm gonna add some salt to it before my mom yells at me. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna add, this also calls for a lot of cheese. So about um, a pound of Munster cheese or mozzarella cheese, um, you're gonna add to that mixture and mix it all together. And that's kind of gonna be your base that holds together all of the zucchini and the onions and so that's basically what I'm gonna do now is add the cheese to the egg mixture and I'll show you what it looks like once it's added. This is a two pound bag, so I'm just using half of it. And you know, this recipe that we put on there, it's a guide, you know, if you are not somebody that likes a lot of cheese, then make it more eggy. If you're somebody that doesn't like a lot of eggs, then make it more cheesy. There's really, no way to mess up this recipe. It's very versatile. It's very easy. Um, kids love it. And you could also make it in advance. Like if you want, you could freeze it in little, in little muffin tins. You can freeze it in a big Pyrex, whatever, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Anyway, so here's my mixture. You can see the cheese and the egg nice in there. I might add a little bit more cheese. I like it cheesy. And I have my zucchini and my onion softening. Check on it every so often, make sure that it's doing what it should do. And I'm kind of just gonna leave it for a little bit while I move on to part two. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to part two just so that, you know, we, for the sake of time and efficiency, I'm gonna actually move this to the rear burner and I'm going to take my lentil. So my lentils basically they should be softened by now um, and there's still some water left in there which is fine. We want to keep that water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a measuring cup and I'm going to take a strainer and I'm going to put one on top of the other and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strain out whatever water is left in my lentils carefully so that I don't spill it all over or burn myself. Okay. While and you're doing that, I'm gonna, I'm, can I just check on Pauline and the dough? Pauline has the yeah, dough yeah. going. It's good? It's good, I needed to give some love to it, which I'll explain soon. I wanted to make sure it's ready. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Okay, our, our lentils are strained now, Molly? Okay, so our lentils are strained, they're softened. And what you're gonna do is, you're gonna see how much water is left in your measuring cup now. So I have about a third of a cup of lentil juice in here. And what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna add to that enough water so that it gets to be um, one and a half cups. So I'm adding my water, I'm looking at the measuring line. Once it gets to one and a half cups, I'm gonna stop. And then I'm going to combine back into that same pot that I just used. I'm gonna combine my lentils, the water, and I'm also gonna combine one cup of rice. Okay, so I have my lentils, I have my water. I have a cup of long grain rice. I'm putting into the pot. And about a tablespoon of salt. Back to my salt. 
and a third of those sauteed crispy onions. And you know, there's really no amount of time that's too long to keep them sauteing. The better, the crispier, the more burnt, the better. So I'm gonna basically take, you know, however many, however many you want, you really just like eyeball it. I take like about a third of them and I add it to the pot. Okay. And the rest I'm gonna just literally just leave on the stove top continuing to saute because these are gonna be the crispies that you're gonna put on top when you eat it and it's gonna be heaven. Okay, so I'm mixing around and I'm gonna bring it to a boil. And then once it's on, a, once it's boiling, I'm gonna lower it, cover it and leave it for a half an hour. And then it's done basically. So how easy was that? Cover and you're done. I'm gonna set it down to the side so it's not in our view. Now, I'm gonna come back to my zucchini onion mixture. Actually, I'm not, I'm gonna send it back to Pauline. Pauline, tell us what's happening with that dough. All right, I'm actually gonna send it back to Molly before I do, but basically I'm working on my dough um, and I needed to give it a little bit of love. Um, it needed a little bit more flour and a little bit more water. Um, I actually use a tortilla press to, um, put, you know, kind of smash my dough and it needs a little bit more time, but I'll get you guys set up with what we need um, to do that. So I'm sure most of you don't have a tortilla press at home. Um, if you do, then make sure that you cover it with plastic um, and put, you know, flour, um, flour it um, on both sides. So you can kind of just wrap it like that. Um, if you don't, I figured out this hack yesterday. So it's really hard to roll um, sembu sack dough out because it's very, again, it's extremely delicate. So you need to really just flatten it um, and you want it to be a certain consistency, like just rolling it out and doing the cookie cutter thing won't work. So we need two flat surfaces. And what I figured out, to do. So again, I'm going to wrap one of my cutting boards in classic wrap like that, just so it doesn't stick. And then use a, a pot, pan pot, same thing. I found my smallest pot so that I can smash it down. So I'll show you when it comes to it. It's basically going to put the dough in between here, smash it, and then peel it from there. So that's a great hack. Uh, what? That's a we great came up with that last night, Aliza. Last yeah, night, we were like, what can we do for the, for the folks who don't have a tortilla press? Um, let's think about it. The dough really is not easy to um, to roll out and whatnot. So, um, you know, that's that. I mean, my my dough is still in the fridge, Molly. I don't know if you want to continue. If not, I can do work with what I have. Um, no, work with what you have because my zucchini needs like a couple more minutes to soften. Okay. So a little bit, you know, wondering how this dough is going to be. So finally, Wait, maybe so people have questions. Should we take some questions? You guys can unmute yourself. If you have a question, you can ask Molly Pauline while they prep the dough and the zucchini. Or you can put them in the chat and I'll read them for you. I won't say your name. Who has a question? I have a question. Pauline, how did you know that your dough needed some love what was it doing um so like i even though i put it in the um fridge to to set like i do try and make a step set with it first to see what it's like in terms of consistency again like the longer it's in the fridge for me the better um so like typically you leave it in for a half hour or so um but for the sake of this um display i had to see if my dough was ready enough to be used um, so I gave it, I, I, I it, it can't be crummy because it needs to stay together, right? Like this. Um, and it can't be, um, it can't be too wet because then it's just not going to work. It's not going to peel either. Um, but I can go ahead and get started. I could show you guys what I just did. Wait, um, time out, time out. I have something to add because I just remembered something that happened earlier. Um, Aliza was asking 
if there's an allergy friendly option for the Mijadra recipe. By the way, there's a lot of different pronunciations. Some people call it Mijadra, some people call it Minjadra, some people call it Injadra, whatever you want to call it. It's all but not the way I said it. But not any, whatever any you way said, except the like way Spanish. I said it. <laughs> that, I thought but, the J was an H. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, about that. if somebody is allergic to um, lentils, they can substitute it for chickpeas. If they do that, you don't have to do the whole soaking thing. Um, you can just add them in in the middle. If somebody is allergic to chickpeas, what I was suggesting to do is you could actually, what you would do is you would saute eggs in olive oil and then add your rice and your water. You would have to add a cup and a half of water. It wouldn't be lentil water, it would just be regular water. Add the rice, a cup and a half of water, and your onions. But you could totally do that. I mean, I haven't done it before, but I figure why not? It could totally work. Um, but just to like be conscious of people that are, you know, allergy prone and might have, you know, allergies to legumes as they're <laughs> called. Okay, um, I'm just gonna quickly show you this amazingness of these sauteed onions. Do you see how they're like a little bit burnt, but crispy, but yummy? This is what you're looking for. You're looking for like some burnt ones, some not burnt ones, caramelized, soft, delicious. I'm actually gonna just shut the gas on those now and leave it. Um, my pot of Jedra is starting to boil, so I'm gonna lower it to a low flame and I'm just gonna cover it and leave it. Don't open the lid until it's done. It's the number one rule that I have. Do not open that lid. What happens if it got and, open, Molly? Yeah, don't wanna open that lid because all the steam's gonna come out and it's like a shame, you don't wanna lose that. Um, and I'm just gonna show you quickly. So my zucchini is done. Um, I don't know if you could see, but like it's soft, but it's not too watery. There's a little bit of water, but that's okay. We just want the vegetables to be soft. They're gonna cook in the oven anyway. By the way, if you haven't already, preheat your oven to 350 or 400, depending on how quickly you want it to cook. Okay, back to you, P. Amazing, all right. So we are gonna move on. Um, and listen, we are going to see how this dough is going to hold up. Um, I actually, we demoed last night to, uh, to, to kind of sample and show you guys the end result, um, which it was funny enough. Um, we made it all summer sec and I didn't put everything in the oven yet, um, but they're all made. Um, so let's see how this dough works. If not, I'll, I'll show you how it went yesterday. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, my tortilla press. I'll show you first. Um, I am having a little bit of difficulty with this batch of dough. I'm not sure if it's a lack of, if there's not enough butter, um, or whatnot, but you'll see, you know, and I'm, and I'm actually going to make them a little bigger because the small, I need a little bit more room in, with these. Um, typically, by the way, this is a very big piece of dough for one. Um, you could probably get away with using like this much. Um, which is like almost half the size. Um, but because of the consistency of this dough, I'm gonna use um, something that's a little bit bigger. I'm gonna point down. Um, so here, I'm gonna do this, let's see. We have a miracle, <laughs> it came out. So as you see, this is how it is. And, and like, look at the, when I pressed down, I did not go to town, right? I went lightly, just enough so it would press, um, but not enough that it would like, completely thin it out like a pancake. Um, and then I'm gonna move down. You really need to peel, like you have to start at one end and peel it off. It's very, very delicate. So you see this, that is like, again, an art in itself. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is what you want. And I didn't do the sesame for this one. I'll demo sesame with the next one that I do. Um, it's funny, my son's allergic to sesame. So he always asks me for special sambusa, which means no sesame. Um, and I promise him over and over again, I'm gonna make them and I always forget. Um, so this is for Make him. these without sesame for him. This is for him. <laughs> this batch is for him. Yes. Um, so here I have my dough, right? So 
this is like where you pay attention. This is kind of like the art. So I feel like Sam Busek is a little bit of art, a little bit of science, right? The dough is definitely a little bit more science, but everything else is an art and you really have to be very delicate with the dough and you have to be very mindful of what you're doing. So I hold it like this, see how my hands are? Um, and I took one of my little cheese balls and I just worked it in my hand and I kind of made it like an oval, uh, an oval, yeah, kind of oblong. So I put it in the middle so I can fold the crescent over. Okay, I'm gonna try and get as close as possible. So you wanna push it up. You literally just wanna like gently push it. And you once you do this many times, you're gonna get used to it and it'll just be really easy. And you wanna create that overflow. So this is how it should look, right? It's going to like completely engulf. Wow, this ended up beautiful. The dough came out fine, beautiful. This is what it looks like. And now I'm gonna show you guys how to flute. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit just cause it's easier for me. Okay, so you always see how pretty the edges are. I'm trying to figure out which is the best way to do it, but just bear with me. So you start with the corner and you just fold it over. I always say like, as I'm looking to the left, fold it. So like, look at it like this straight ahead, your bottom left and start in that corner. And you wanna fold the corner up to the right. So up to the right, and then every right, top right corner, like this corner, you wanna do the same thing. You wanna do it up to the right, and up to the right, and up to the right. And you'll be Pauline, able to turn it so we can see what you're looking at. See? Yeah, perfect. Up to the right, to the right, there, 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 boom. Okay, and now you have a beautifully fluted sabusak. Wow. So, I feel like that's like the, the Syrian. To the camera so we can see yeah. your, your handiwork. I feel like that's a Syrian version of like crimping a pie dough. <laughs> yes. Right? I, I guess so. For I sure. never crimped a pie dough. So maybe this is a Syrian version. <laughs> yeah, totally. It is. Right? I had to learn from my grandmother how to make pie dough. Yeah. Yes. This is a thing that you learn from your grandmother, by the way. Like my grandmother taught me using Play Doh when I was a little girl, like how to okay. do it. And like, you just, this is how that generation did things. Like nowadays you can just go to any supermarket in Brooklyn or deal and you could buy them frozen. You don't have to sit in Pashka at home and do a whole thing. But back then, like they didn't have it. They would spend hours crimping and fluting the edges and making it look beautiful. And like, who knows how they had the time to do this because they also had like six kids. So go figure, <laughs> but it sure. got done somehow. Pauline, I have a question for you. Do you yeah. ever skip the fluting process? Never, ever, ever. Come on, it's not a sambu without the fluting process. Okay, okay. <laughs> you, good to also, you really can't fluting. with no this hat. dough. You could, you could skip the fluting process if you're using the Mazer's dough because the edges are perfectly circular. These okay. are not. So like you have to you know, work with what you have um, and, and create this. Otherwise, if you do, you kind of just fold it over the top. It'll look funky and also, it's very crispy when it comes out. So like if you right. left these edges alone, at least like fold them over or something because they kind of um, clump together and like, you know, you'll have a crispy bite with that. So okay. I'm gonna put this one down over here and I'm gonna do another one with the half. Okay, so, well, this is a big piece of dough. I'm gonna get a small piece of dough. All right, and I have some others that I'll just work on the fluting I already pressed out. So again, here is my dough. Oh, sesame this time. So there are also two methods for sesame. So I like to do this one. This eliminates a step. It's much easier and it's much less messy. So you pretty much take the dough and like stick it in there, get it nice and sesame, okay? Um, you wanna put it at the, just put bottom. This. I'm gonna push it a little further, a little harder on this. And as you see, so these sesames are interesting. They're a little bit toasted. Mm, I think I pressed down a little bit too hard, but I'm gonna salvage this circle anyways. So this is my circle, which is much, they're much smaller if you use that hack. So like if you intend to make these often, you probably want to invest in a tortilla press, which I don't know, it's probably $20 on Amazon, maybe less. But as you see, 
they're a little bit smaller again because there's no like surface room to press down any harder. We kind of just have two hard areas. So that is how it comes out. Um, I'm going to put the dough, I mean the cheese in. As I'm not even cooking over the stove top and <laughs> it's so hot in this kitchen. <laughs> oh, okay. So same thing. You have to be very careful. Remember we, we had, we condensed the cheese together in these balls. So like there is a lot, even though it seems like a little. So again, I'm gonna put it in. Use literally these fingers to gently pinch. And then loop. Oh, this one's gonna be interesting too. Mm -hmm. Okay, really all depends on your batch of dough. The other thing, by the way, is you can repair in the middle, right? Like this happened to be good, but like there were little cracks in the back. It really, you know, it'll happen, especially if you're starting. Um, you, don't want, you don't want there to be cracks because the, uh, the cheese will come through. It's fine if it does. You're just gonna have like some boussac that have brown coming out, which is what I did yesterday when I did it really quickly. Um, it doesn't really affect the taste. It just affects the visual. Um, but you can go and the dough is so easy to work with that like if there's a crack, you kind of just like work your finger on top of it, like pinch it together a little bit like that, and you close the crack. Uh, so I'll do one more with you guys, just to show you again the fluting effect. I had already pressed out some of this dough. I'm going to put another one instead. told my friend that I was doing this and she was like, you're doing homemade dough? <laughs> and I was like, this is the only way to do it. You got to uh, go big or go home. So I'm going to flour a little bit my tortilla press. Show you guys again. And then, oh, I actually like sesame. So I'm going to put the sesame in. Oh, the other sesame, the other sesame um, method is, by the way, at the end, you don't test me any in the beginning. Um, you egg wash and you put sesame on like that. Um, it's more prone to fall off. And again, it's an extra step that I just don't appreciate. So I don't do it anymore. I do this. Okay. So again, there are like a few cracks in here. I take one of my little cheese balls. And again, the dough that's pre-made is just as good if you're making homemade if you've never made it before. Like this is a project that you could work on tonight, certainly. And email me with any questions you have. But definitely something that, again, I grew up with and took me many, 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 many trials to get it right. Um, it's hard to get it right to work with the dough. But if you're into it, it'll work. So this one's not as pretty because of the sesame. But there you have the flu. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Molly. Hey guys. All right, so I'm gonna start putting together the question. Sesame. Are the yes. sesame seeds inside or outside? Outside. And by the way, um, other, other um, options, which people are getting like creative nowadays are to change up the cheeses inside. So people will do like fun things like cheddar jalapeno, or they'll do za'atar on the outside, or they'll mix pesto with the mozzarella. So people are getting very creative, which is a lot of fun. Um, I haven't personally done it yet, but I'm sure it's delicious. Um, and also before I pass it back over, I forgot. So you, if you're putting two things, so you could freeze the sambu sec, which is normally what I do. You wanna freeze it before you bake it if you're not gonna bake it all in one batch. Um, so if you wanna put away 48 and then you wanna take out six or 12, that's the best way. So freeze it on a tray like this. These are what I made last night. So you wanna freeze them on a tray. And then once they're frozen, get them in a Ziploc um, and line it with parchment paper so that you can layer it and then put them in the oven. So um, no, don't spray the parchment paper. Um, and 
I would say like I'm very into sill pads, but I still don't use them for some blue sack. I use parchment paper. So try and use parchment paper. Don't use foil. Um, the other thing, because you want it to be unsprayed. Um, you want it to be a dry surface. The other thing is that if you're cooking it fresh, like I just threw a few of the fresh ones in to see if they can cook in time. Um, and I can show you the end result. It's at 350. It says, the recipe says 15 minutes. It's not 15 minutes. It's probably more like 25 minutes. But again, you want to check and see the bottoms when the bottoms are just golden brown. And that's my gauge. But again, I don't know. Every oven's a little different. I cook mine at 350 for like 25 minutes. If they're frozen, you could cook them at 400 um, for also, I would say like for the first 20 minutes, cook at 400, maybe even lower to 350 for the last 10 minutes or so, so they don't burn. Um, but that's what I would do in terms of cooking. And then either eat them right away or refrigerate them and then heat them up. I find if they're out on the counter, they're not as fresh. I'm gonna pause. But they're also really good cold. cold. And they're they're like, they're also cold. really good period, any, any time. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. Okay. Um, so I start? Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to take a Pyrex. I'm just going to spray it with a little pan or olive oil, whatever you have. And you're going to look at the um, zucchini onion mixture. If you find that there's a lot of liquid in it, I would use a slotted spoon and scoop out the mixture and put it in the Pyrex so that you don't have all this water. But since mine is not so watery, I'm going to just directly pour it right into the Pyrex that I have here. And like so. Okay. A little bit left in here. I'm just going to scoop it out. It's good ease. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my egg and cheese mixture and I'm going to take about half of it and I'm going to pour that into the zucchini onion mixture and you're going to kind of mush it around so that the cheesiness goes throughout, throughout your jibbin. And again, like I said before, if you like it more eggy, add more egg. If you like it more cheesy, add more cheese. There's no, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Okay, then you're gonna kind of flatten the top with your spoon or fork. And you're gonna take the extra mixture and you're gonna just spread it out on top. And it's gonna look so good and golden and yummy. Now, this next step, my mom never did before growing up, but, but I started doing it and it's just very decadent. Um, if you don't wanna do it, you don't have to, but I take a little bit of butter. Yes, butter, I said the word. And you're gonna just really take, I don't know, about like five or six little thin slivers. Like literally, I just go like this and I just take a little sliver and I just plop it throughout the Jibbin, whatever, you can put however much you want. Again, I don't really measure. It's just a few pats of butter for extra calories and deliciousness. And this is basically what it looks like before it goes in. Yum. Now I'm gonna just put it in the oven to bake. I'm putting it on 400 and again, like Pauline said, it's kind of really depends on your oven and your um, preference for level of doneness. And you can just check on it every so often and see once the top gets golden. So by the magic of television. Ta-da! This is the That's one that the I oven. Fresh out of the oven. So um, quick. You know so quick. How did I do it? Um, um, yeah. So this is how it looks when it's cooked. It's golden on top and you could see, you know, how thick it is on the bottom. You can see the egg mixture through there. It doesn't re really rise very high, so you can fill it as much as you want in the Pyrex. 
but this is how it looks when it's done. Again, you can, you know, if you wanted to make little miniature um, muffin tins and, you know, you can get something like this and you can make your mixture all in a big bowl and then spoon out and then top with a little bit of cheese on each one. And you bake this and then when it's done, you freeze it and it's like a great breakfast item. You can just grab out and go, it's great for kids. You know, my baby that's nine months old loves it. And like, it's just such an easy, simple thing. And it's very versatile and you can make it look pretty. If you want, you can get those little crusts and put that on the bottom of it. If you want to add, you know, like a little crunch factor, um, it's really your preference and you can have fun with it. It's like a very versatile dish and, and I love it. Um, okay. Molly, I have a question. Yeah. Well, so I, when I'm making jibin, which, um, you know, when I make spanaf or I really don't make husak so much, which I have to start, I actually start mine covered and then I uncover it. Do you ever do that so that um, it cooks without being too well done on top? You could, it really depends on your oven. Like you can start, start it covered, but I don't know, when I do it, I just keep checking on it and I see how it looks. But I think with the spanf, it's a little more watery. So maybe it needs more cook time for the middle and you don't want yeah. the top to burn. So then that would make sense. But for the kusa, I didn't make mine watery, so it's really pretty, um, pretty foolproof, I guess. Is the okay, word. no, that makes that makes sense um, because I was just thinking about how like watery the spanaf is, and this is a little bit more yeah. dense. That's why it's important. Like, if you notice that your zucchini is watery, that's okay. You don't have to like throw it out and make a whole new batch, but just when you're transferring it to the Pyrex, use a slotted spoon so that all that water isn't going into your jibbin because that's not, it's gonna take a long time to cook and it's gonna be soggy and you don't want that, especially if you're gonna use like a little pie crust or something like that. You can get, if you want, you could use like the Keebler pie crust or whatever brand you like and you can make it in there. I've seen people do that before. I personally don't do it because I like my calories in the butter instead but it's really and by the way don't fun. confuse pie crust for graham cracker crust which i never yes. like <laughs> it's not the same it's not the not same, the same. Um, we have a okay. question how yeah. long is the cook time at 400. again it really depends on how well done you like the top i just keep checking it but basically it's gonna be 40 minutes it's not a quick thing that's like 25 minutes it's probably around 40 minutes 30 40 minutes i would just keep an eye on it and okay. you know, there's not, it's not, it's too well done. It's still good as long as it's not burnt on the top. Yeah, like there's no wrong here. I think there's like enough liquid that it doesn't, like you cannot really overcook it. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's still good. There's no overcooking this cause it's like an egg mixture. Um, okay, so what I wanna do next is I wanna go to the Leban, which is basically what you eat your jibbin and your majedra with if you're adventurous. If not, you can skip this step, but I love it. And I actually haven't made it in a very long time, probably since I got married. Cause like it's pure <laughs> yogurt and my husband doesn't eat that. But anyway, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a bowl. You're going to put in that bowl about a cup of plain yogurt. I use just regular plain yogurt. You could use Greek yogurt if you want, but I find that it's like very thick and doesn't spread as well. And you kind of want to be able to spread it like on top of your vajedra. So you just blob it right into a bowl. And what you're going to do next is you're going to chop a cucumber into very small pieces. So here I like kind of pre-cut one already. This is what I did. I like sliced it so that when I cut it, it's gonna be into little tiny cucumber bits. And, you know, it really depends on how much cucumber you like. I think I put on the recipe about two to three cucumbers, but, you know, I don't really even like that much for myself. So I'm just gonna do maybe about half of this cucumber um, and just try to get your bites small because you don't wanna be biting into a big chunk of, 
of cucumber, um, yeah. cucumber. You want it to be thin and small. If you have a food processor, you could do that too. But I have it. So like this is basically what I did here. Small, tiny little bits. And you put that right into your yogurt. And next. One, but, one quick question. What do you do with the yeah. extra onion? Do the extra onions on top of the, before you put it in the oven? For the jibin? No, that's for the majadra later. Later? Okay. Yeah, it's later. I'm going to show you what you do later. Um, okay, fine. So I have my, my cucumbers and my yogurt, and I'm going to put a teaspoon of kosher salt in with that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a garlic clove. So you can use, I'm going to use the frozen one from just because that's what I have. But if you have fresh, fresh garlic, obviously way better. Just make sure that you crush it. Because again, you don't want to be biting into like a chunk of garlic. That's not going to be enjoyable for anybody. But you just take one clove, pop it in. Hopefully it'll defrost when I mix it. And then the last step is you're gonna use some dried mint. You can use fresh mint, you can use dried. I mean, this recipe calls for dried, so we're just gonna use dried. You can get this, Cedar Market has it, a lot of different grocery stores have it. It's Pereg brand. And I'm just gonna throw in, and again, this is to your taste. If you're not into mint, then don't put this much, but I really like it. I think it adds a lot to the experience. So you add a tablespoon of the mint and you just mix it all up. And this is gonna basically be your topping for your majedra and your spanak. They literally just, oh, I'm like, so, I can't wait for the one in the oven to be done because there's nothing better than like this contrast of like the cold, cold yogurt mixture on top of the hot, um, the best. Yeah. And so by the way, good. you could use this for like, if you guys, maybe the next day or so, or maybe we can even send the Kes Kasun recipe, but like, there are so many other dishes that we can use this for, okay. like you can kind of throw it on a lot of dairy dishes um, that it's just like delicious. Tune in next episode to see what else look. you can put oh. Laban on. Mm, mm. Okay, so yeah, and it's just, it's heaven. It's just so good and creamy and yummy. It's kind of like it's a tiki, I guess, if you wanted to equate it to something more commonplace that you've heard of. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what you're going to do. And quickly back to my majedra. So it's still boiling. I'm not, I'm not boiling, sorry. It's still simmering covered. I'm not opening it, but by the magic of television. <laughs> okay, here is what I made last night. I did sneak a few bites as you can see, but whoever asked before, I think it was Nurse Toby, but before what you can do is you can just add these fried onions on top. Now, now I have them in here because I didn't want to like store them in a separate container. I just wanted to throw them on but usually you just serve it hot and then you just plop them on your portion instead of just putting it on top of the whole thing. But you know, you can do what you like. You can save it, but it's just so good and it's so crispy and delicious and oh, it's just amazing. So that is the majedra, the kusa, the leban. And basically what you're gonna do is once your majedra and your kusa are done, you're gonna make yourself a nice plate with a little bit of both and put a blob of leaven on top and your taste buds will dance and sing. <laughs> Pauline, do you put the leaven on the sambusak or is that like forbidden? Forbidden, okay. Forbidden, forbidden. forbidden. Don't forbidden. anything to the sambusak, just put it in your mouth. <laughs> okay. You know that my husband put ketchup on it one time and I almost murdered him. That's murdered. interesting. Dipping sauce is nothing. No, if you do it, you no. eat. You're really like killing it. And by the way, I went, back to my, I went back to my dough and I think that I did not have enough butter. Um, and so I actually salvaged it. And uh, again, you have to kind of be, be patient with your sambu secto. Um, so in case any of you were wondering, that's how I, that's how I uh, did surgery to it. 
I know you saw me like working in my KitchenAid over here. <laughs> so you have to baby it. You do have to baby. And by the way, like, look, I'm peeling, like literally peeling from one end to make sure that it comes off. And that's when actually my plastic broke. So this is, I have to replace it. So actually it won't work out so well, but um, you really have to baby it and uh, do what you can with the dough. So don't, don't be too hard on yourself. Molly, are you, uh, what? I said, or do you have anything else uh, left to share? Well, not anything, um, you shared a lot. <laughs> not really, but I just want to once again show you my crispy onion perfection. How it looks good delicious. That looks. It looks so good. I want to just eat it right now, but I won't. If anyone um, has any questions yes, for Molly and Pauline, yes. they can feel free to unmute yourself and ask. And also, um, we are going to put Molly and Pauline's email in the chat. So if you have a question, feel free to email them. Anyone have a question? Unmute yourself. Okay. Before freezing, should I put egg yolk and sesame seeds on my sambu sock? Good question. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Okay. The less work, the better. Julie Oren says, thank you so much, Pauline and Molly. So for fun and informative. Julie's my Syrian. Um, no, I'm her protege. <laughs> Are you proud of She's my teacher. <laughs> Again, the, uh, the rest of the onions go after it's cooked. As after, cooking after it's it. cooked. It's really just like a topping. Think of it as a topping, the extra onions. Does someone have a question? I see a hand raised. A that was mine. Raised, but okay. Just answered. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Okay. Everyone's welcome to stay on and ask Molly and Pauline their questions. If you if you need Pauline to diagnose your dough, your she will do that. But I wanted to say thank you so much for coming on and supporting on me and you guys are amazing and such a great showing and um pauline and molly um have signed on to do more of these so please let us know what you would like to see made and we will do that thank you so much everyone and enjoy your sambusak your jedra question yes when you add the butter to the rice and lentil, do you mix it um, and then simmer for another 10 minutes? Oh, I'm sorry. So I don't really do that step, but you okay. can do it if you want. And I would do it once it's dry. Like you don't put it in when it's cooking, you put it in when it's done cooking and it's still hot. And you're gonna just put a stick, like a little bit of butter in there and mix it around. But you don't have to do that step if you are like cutting okay. calories or whatever, it's not essential to to the majadra. And then are you and then are you still cooking it for another 10 minutes or no? One second. Let me consult my recipe. While Molly consults the recipe, I'm just gonna <laughs> tell everyone. Um, we have another event coming up. This is a meet a, a meet a meet event. You can come and learn what we're all about a little more in depth. Um, it's hosted by our new gen affinity group, but we would love to see you all there. It's gonna be Tuesday, February 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, and 6 p.m. Pacific. We would love to see you all there. And thank you so much. We hope to see you again at more events. So back to that question, yes. So what you're gonna do is after 30 minutes is up, you're gonna put your butter, if you're using it, and simmer for another 10. If you're not, then you're just covering it and leaving it for 40 minutes total. Okay, thank you. Sure. I totally missed that step because I never do it. But if you are following the recipe by the letter, like do that step. If you don't do it, it will still be delicious. I'm sure it's delicious Test either it. way. Thank you. Right marks in this one. <laughs> Over and get yours later. Thank you. This is each other's, this is each other's dinners for tomorrow night. Yeah, I can't wait. Go on and pick it up. <laughs> can, you, can you ship some to Queens? I'm, I'm really hungry for the Sambusa. <laughs> and... That's, that's how I bribe my friends, by the way. I tell them I just made a fresh batch of sambusak, and that's when they invite me over. Please and they're stay. expensive, too. Yeah, by the way, if you pay for a sambusak, sometimes it's like... A dollar fifty each. Fifteen dollars a dozen. So yeah. let's say you could get like seven dollar cheese at Costco, and 
semolina and the flour, really nothing. Like you can honestly make 40 sambusa for like, I don't know, nine bucks. So something to consider um, too. And you can just stash them in your freezer. Really good for Shavuot. So I know it's like, yes, I think yes. all these recipes are very good for Shavuot. And mm -hmm. um, maybe you guys will come up some more dairy ones for Shavuot. But thank you so much. Um, if people, oh, you know what? In the, I'm going to put Molly and Pauline's emails. Molly, tell me yours again. <laughs> Just um, Molly Lauren at Gmail. <laughs> Lauren at Gmail. I actually think it's probably better if I give you a phone. Oh, if I give you a phone number. Okay, uh, you can text your questions. Yeah, just text me because um, I'm not going to answer you now. Um, I'll just put it in the chat so everybody. Okay. Everybody's Thank you guys. Yeah. Enjoy and send us pictures. Send, yeah, send, send me pictures. pictures. Um, I'm, you're going to get a thank you email tomorrow with um, a little survey and uh, the recording for anyone that wants it. So please, if you have any questions, email me. I'll forward them to Pauline and Molly. And we cannot wait to see your pictures of everything. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, what is that? What are you if showing you us, If you ever Pauline? need a cookbook and you want Syrian recipes, I'm sure most of you know, Deal the Lights. The red is the classics. So favorite. Thanks, guys. Good night. Bye. Stay warm, everyone. Bye. Bye. It was wonderful. Thank you. They did Thank a great you. job. You girls did a great job. Robin, are you still here? I'm so hungry. <laughs> Molly, we need you to, to ship some to Queens. We're very hungry over here. Molly. We would like some in Skokie. I know. Okay, so we're, we're gonna make a shipping order for you guys. We're gonna have to ship to Queens, to Chicago. Whoever's still on is welcome to stay on. It's just got meat staff. We're gonna talk about how hungry we are. I see a few people. Did Molly go? Okay. I'm gonna go eat something on that note, but thank you everyone. That was really great. We'll see you at the next event, okay? Bye.